Let's go y'all, let's talk about Chino back with another video. I'm gonna try to be as quick as possible with this. All right, so Ja Morant, uh, on March the 3rd is where he uh, had a game against Denver. Late Saturday, late Friday night, early Saturday morning. He was uh, having a good time like anybody would normally have. He was in a strip club in Denver, Colorado. Chilling, uh, having a good time. The only problem with that is uh, he showed a gun on the camera. Now, people just look at this like, oh, it's just an innocent thing. He's young, blah, blah, blah. Listen, it's time to learn. There are rules and regulations in the NBA. And then there's also laws that you must obey. So I'm gonna go over a few things and I'm gonna break down a few things about what the CBA is, uh, the collective bargaining agreement uh, for the NBA and uh, how this thing could be very bad for John Morant. First thing first, let's talk about the idea of gun safety. Um, I, I, I white out the, the pistol because I didn't want to show it on camera. I don't want any strikes. Uh, with that being said, gun safety is important. You never hold a gun with your index in your thumb. You never do that. Uh, I don't care how small it is. Uh, you gotta understand that uh, you, you, you wanna be careful to never hold a gun with two fingers. Um, it's safe to say that he probably wasn't sober. Uh, the thing about it is you're, you're in a strip club, first of all, you're in any club with a gun. Uh, that's not something you want to do. And if you're not, if you're not sober, being publicly intoxicated with a gun, that is illegal. Most people never said that. Now, I'm just assuming that he was in, he was probably intoxicated, probably had been doing anything. I don't know. It's a safe assumption to say that he wasn't sober. But with that being said, it is illegal to have a gun on you while drinking because, yeah, the gun is on you. But drinking, you cannot brandish that gun. You can't shoot anyone with that gun. Which goes to the second charge. The second thing is that it's illegal. Brandishing a weapon is a criminal charge under the Penal Code 417. Now, in defense of John Morant, it's all about the intent. Uh, him flashing the gun the way he flashed it, it seemed innocent. But you gotta understand, he's quoting you know, rap lyrics. You know, of course he could just be having a good time. But who knows if he was at the, at the moment he's saying what he's saying. He's talking to somebody. He's mentioning things like ops and he's throwing gang signs or there may be hood signs. I don't know. He's from South Carolina. Hey, those signs he throw can be from anywhere. I want to also mention this sidebar. Everyone knows that TVL or travel advice laws where you have two of your, uh, your, 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 your middle finger, your index finger up and the thumb out. Now, that's when you throw it up, it could also mean vice lord. If you throw it down, it can also mean neighborhood crip. So in LA, it means one thing. And in every other state that has, you know, the vice lords, it could mean something else. But I've also seen that mean something in Port Arthur, Texas. So, and, and I also seen that mean something in Boston and in, in Miami. Like, so it, it does differ, it does have a difference meaning. So you can't necessarily say he's a crip. I want to be clear on that. However, throwing those signs, also so an intent for brandishing the weapon. We don't know what that means. I want to also explain something about the travel policy, which comes to my third point. The travel policy for the NBA players. And I want people to understand that there's a thing in the CBA called firearms and other weapons in section nine. There's an A, B, and C column. Whenever a player is physically present at a facility or venue owned, operated, or being used by a team, the NBA, or any league related entity, and whenever a player is traveling on an NBA related business, whether on behalf of the player's team, the NBA, or any league related entity, such player shall not possess a firearm of any kind or any other deadly weapon for purposes of the foregoing a facility or venue includes but is not limited to an arena a practice facility a team or league office or facility an all-star or nba playoff venue and the site of the promotional or charitable appearance b a, com a commencement 
of each season and if the player owns or possesses any firearm. The player will provide the team with proof that the player possesses a license or registration as required by law for any such firearm. Each player is also required to provide the team with proof of any modifications or additions. Section C, any violation of section 9A or section 9B above shall be considered conduct prejudicial to the NBA under Article 35D of the NBA Constitution and by laws and shall therefore subject players disciplined by the NBA in accordance with such article. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the traveling. Let me explain the traveling of the states, all right? So for those who don't know, March 4th, late night, was after the Nuggets game. He was in Denver. The last home game they've had in Memphis was February the 28th versus, versus the Lakers. And that means that between that time after the game, he traveled to Houston, Texas. They played the Rockets on March the 1st. So he went from Memphis to Houston, Houston to Denver. And on March the 3rd is when they had the game in Denver. Problem is, Texas is, the, is a permitless state, not New Mexico and Colorado. Now, to get to Colorado, you might be able to skip New Mexico. But it's very important to note that New Mexico and Colorado are not permanent states, but they both can accept licenses in other states. However, Tennessee has no, no permit. That's a permanent, the Tennessee is a permanent state. Let me put it that way. Meaning that he has no gun permit. It's important to know that the laws when traveling is very important. I'm gonna give you an example of what I have to do. I'm going to drive my car from Memphis, Tennessee to Massachusetts, to the state of Massachusetts. I have a license to carry in the state of Massachusetts. I also have various codes where I'm able to carry in 39 plus states. Now, my only big problem, and for the record, Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, New Jersey, PA, Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, and then Massachusetts. I have to travel through all those states. Three states I know I'm gonna have a problem in. I'm gonna have a problem with Maryland. I'm gonna have a problem with New Jersey, New York. All three of those states I'm gonna have a problem with. The issue is, is I gotta make sure I have a reason why I'm traveling. I have to make sure my gun is completely separate from the clip and it's not loaded. And if I do have it in a box, it must be locked and it must have safety locks to it. I know I gotta make sure I do everything correctly. I don't wanna put myself in a situation where my gun is on me. And let's just say, for example, I'm in Patterson, New Jersey, where I'm gonna need a gun. But let's say I stop in Patterson, New Jersey and I wanna get me something to eat and a bodega or whatever. And I got a gun on me, concealed, and I only have a license to carry in different states, but not New Jersey. You know what happens? I'm going to jail. With that lease or not, I know what I should have that gun not on me so i know the gun laws and most people need to study if you're going to be a gun owner i don't care how old you are we understand that john moran is young but he has to know the laws know what you can and can't do you know I, listen i believe this with, with a very important note a friend of mine years ago drunk at a party he's intoxicated he's not too drunk but he's drunk enough he had some alcohol he got into a situation where he got into a fight. Gun went off. You know what happened? He went to jail. He shot his gun. He was intoxicated. Self-defense, but he was intoxicated. You know what that means? It's not self-defense no more. It's very important that you know the laws. It's very important that you understand how you travel and, you know, cause going on that plane, they can hold him accountable for traveling state lines where you're not allowed to carry a gun, even though you're in the air. It's very important to notice that. Notice that. Now, I don't know the, the, the company plane or the business plane may be a private plane. Some of these teams fly private. Some of them fly commercial and they just have their own personal plane from Delta Southwest or whatever. However, it's very important to know these things. I just want to point all this stuff out for those who don't understand that, hey, 
him holding this gun on IG Live is not as innocent as it seems. And it's not that small as it seems. This could be a very bad situation. I hope they could just overlook it and just look look at it like, yo, he's just having a good time. And, you know, they better hope that they can say that gun is a lighter. It is kind of small, but hey, then, you know, they might have a situation where you might have to explain like where you get the gun from. Did you travel with it? Did you buy it in Denver? That's another question that has to be answered. Did you buy it in Houston? That's another question. You know, did you really go from Memphis to Houston, Houston? Like, do you understand that traveling state to state and not telling them that you had this gun? And the NBA, uh, the owner of the team and the coaches and the players could say, hey, we didn't know he had a gun. That's a charge. Like, this is serious. So, I don't want to talk too much. So, I people like the effect. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Hey. Let's hope this ain't no big deal. Let's just make, you know, hope with it. You know, and I do like the scheme that they saying that this is mental health. But uh, hey, do what you gotta do to make this, you know, clean this up. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit the like button and make sure you subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to receive all notifications from Huggy Pacino. In the description box, you can find all 10 channels. HP Media 1 and 2 are the two new channels. You can also subscribe to my dog Julio and Huggy Pacino 1 through 6. And there's also a Huggy Pacino Effect throwback channel. And you can also contact me via email and phone. And if you would love to donate to the channel, here's where you could donate. Cash App and PayPal. The link's on the screen. Donations. Donations. Donations, gifts, gifts. Everybody on these YouTube channels lying. Everybody lying. Everybody, this big time trending topic. Everybody, these hardcore gangsters. Everybody gonna do this to each other when they see each other. And truth be told, we too blessed and we be having too many views in this YouTube shit to be going to war with each other. And truth be told, don't nobody wanna fight nobody on this YouTube shit. Cause 98% of these YouTubers is cowards. Mmm, now that's Huggy Pacino certified. certified.